Yo guys, what's going on? It's your boy, Chris, and welcome to Faith Chapel Students, where our vision is to grow young people up through God's word to reflect Jesus. Hey, look, we are kicking today off with a bang. But before we get into the experience, I just want to say hello to my VIPs or our first time guests. Yo, what's going on, guys? Look, you could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be here, a part of our family. And we say thank you for that. Hey, before we hop into the experience, let me pray for you. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for this time that we get to experience your word. And we thank you for worship this morning. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, let's go. Thank you for joining us today. We are about to start this new series on love. It is a three week series about Easter. And basically, the bottom line, what we want you to understand from this series is that there is good news for everyone. Say that with me. There is good news for everyone. And so this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him that's first john 4 verse 9 how jesus showed love how jesus loved showed us what love can do you know i remember growing up uh, when i was a little kid and my brother and i am my brother, my cousins, and I, we would go to the swimming pool every year. Every year we would go to the swimming pool and we just go to the swimming pool. And so this was, this was before I started taking swimming lessons, but we would just go to the swimming pool all the time. The swimming pool was a community swimming pool and it was cheap. So we would, we would just go every, every, almost every day during the summer. And so when I went to the swimming pool this particular time, I just, I dived into the, the I would always dive into the, the three feet, five feet. I would hold on the little rail, walking down the five feet, but then I would then just kind of never be, never be, navigate back down to the three feet. And so what happened was this one time I said, yeah, I'm a, uh, you know, I was telling people, yeah, I'm going to swim. I'm going to jump on the dive board and I'm blah, 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 blah. So I got myself to the spot where I, I was there. I'm, I'm going to jump into the nine feet i could not swim right and so what happened was i ended up going on the diving board jumping off the diving board and guess what happened i landed into a nine foot pool of water and i didn't know how to swim and i just waddled around just with my hands up and all this kind of stuff. And what happened was the lifeguard started blowing the whistle, started blowing the whistle and, and, and yelling and things of that nature to get somebody to help me. And they threw it, the, the little rafter in. And so I grabbed the rafter and they pulled me up. And then they made this comment. They said this, they said, woo, you must've been tired because you didn't make it to the side. They, said that in such an incredible and loving way to the point where they did not want me to be afraid of water or they did not want me to stop moving in the direction of coming to the swimming pool and going and growing. To that point, what happened was it caused me to want to learn how to swim. And so we didn't just now just go to the swimming pool just to get in the water we ended up started taking swimming lessons to the point i got really really good at swimming to the point now i can jump in the nine feet to the point now i can swim any kind of i can swim really really well to the point i got into i don't know the swimming swim team to the point where it was those things because of the way they did it because of the way they made me feel because of the way it caused me to want to learn and get better the way they approached it. It changed my perspective. Well, here's the deal. 
with Easter right around the corner, we believe that the same thing can happen for a lot of other people. We believe that one thing that may have been a could have been a devastating situation for somebody or could have been a bad situation that everything can change. Everything can change. You know, it was thousands of years ago and when Jesus died on the cross for all mankind and now because of culture and different people groups that we found these different ways to kind of express what Easter is in this culture but the motivation behind everything Jesus went through and the resurrection that that just was so mass magnificently that happened the whole purpose of this day that we have set aside to remember what Jesus did and what God did is the reason that we're going to call this series love it was all because of love and it was his love for you that made him do it and he would do it all over again when you see easter for what it really is everything changes the reason for easter is love love is the reason jesus lived he came here he obeyed his father it was love that caused jesus to obey to obey his father all the way to the end it was love it was love was the motivation love was was the motivating factor and love was the reason jesus died he loved us so much to buy us back to God. And love is the reason Jesus rose again with all power. Love is the motivating factor. And it's very important for us to realize that when we see Easter for what it really is, everything, I'm talking about everything changes. Love is the reason for Easter. And I we want you all to really grasp that love is the reason for Easter. We, we, we really don't think love is what God is like at all when we feel like things are not happening the way we think they should you know let's, let's just be honest let's just be straight up when you don't get what you feel like you should have gotten or when you feel like things are not going in your way you don't feel like god is love and and when we look at it from that perspective what happens is we end up looking at God from a different lens and what happens is we end up not wanting any parts of the true story because we really don't think that love is what God is really like at all when we when we don't get what we want you know that's 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 a, or, or it doesn't happen the way we want it to happen or we prayed for something and we worked hard at something but it didn't turn out the way we wanted it to turn out and we now think that god is not really like love for real or it does he doesn't look like what I anticipated love to look like 
and 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 what it causes us to look at him differently god doesn't seem when god doesn't seem like god is for you and and you know there there are there are times if you're just honest if you're honest with yourself do you sometimes feel like that god isn't for you especially when you have uh especially when you have those moments where you want something or you ask your parents for something or you just ask them to go somewhere or it look like your parents are having challenges it look like it looks as those things are happening that doesn't you know work well in your household and things are not just kind of you, you're having these bad experiences it seems as though maybe what you've been taught isn't happening the way you thought it should so you end up kind of moving from your experience sis with God and you start thinking that God doesn't seem like God is for you because of your experiences and here's the deal your experiences are real but your experiences do not give the total picture of who God is and what God is really like you know sometimes I think we may have an idea or we think that maybe God feels more like an entitled and angry authority figure sometimes we end up putting God in a position of what we have experienced with our parents or what we have experienced with the lack of a parent because the first representation that a young person kind of identify God with is their parent and so sometimes if you feel as though there's not that connection there then you can kind of stop that from that the standpoint of thinking that God is not for you and so it's very important for us to know what our thoughts are and how we're thinking because that can affect what we think you know oftentimes we can think that God is annoyed with our constant poor choices you know, we can make some bad decisions. You know, you think about it with, with our parents. Sometimes your parents are extremely annoyed with some of the decisions you make. And, and then they, they yelling at you. Sometimes they may curse at you. Sometimes they're, and, and they're, they're annoyed. So now you think that God is annoyed with your poor choices. God is love then sometimes you can feel like God is angry because you messed up because again with your parents or with coaches or with authority figures when you mess up or they get angry at you and they they say things about you or they or you get your or things of that nature and now you think that God is the same way with you you know you, 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 God is a perfectionist. You, you think that that since God is perfect, He wants you to be this perfectionist. He, he you, you wants everything dot all the I's, cross all the T's, and no mistakes. Or God, you think that way. God is absent. There are times where some of you all may be thinking, "Well, you know, God is absent." God doesn't really care what happens to you. You may have been abandoned by your mom or you may have been abandoned by your dad or one of your parents may have died and now you feel like God is absent because your parent is absent. And that's that's a real challenge that some people may struggle with or face and then some of some sometimes there's this 
this place of feeling like God is irrelevant. This the 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 Bible is a book of old rules that don't fit in a now generation that don't fit in generation from generation to generation to generation um god is old news and and not at all that helpful with today's problems and 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 you can get to this place and feel like the bible is irrelevant his word is irrelevant the the rules and the things that are going on don't line up with this particular generation and it can come across like God is irrelevant and and here's the deal good news doesn't seem so good when God doesn't seem so great Oof. good news God has good news for you for us but it doesn't seem so good when God don't seem so great. I don't want to hear nothing new, no news from you when I don't feel like you you bringing good news. I don't want to hear that. I, I don't, I don't want to hear that. I don't, you, it didn't seem like you're bringing good news. But first John, John is one of Jesus' disciples and he wrote the book of John, which is in the Bible. But he also wrote first John, second John and third John. And in these particular writings, 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, the, the latter part, it says, God is love. John had a relationship with Jesus. John was around Jesus. John has some history with Jesus. And, and see, that's what, what sometimes we're lacking. We don't have history with God. We got history with a person or we have history with an individual or, and we elevate that history more than having some history with God. And 1 John 4, 9 through 10 tells us this in the NIV Bible. It says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might through him so that so send his only son into the world that we might live through him this is love not that we loved God but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins he loved us he loved us he sent his son his one and only son into the world that we might live through him it there was a an anticipation and an expectation for us to live through his son and this is love not that we loved God. See, it wasn't even contingent on what we did first. He loved, he loved us and sent his son to sacrifice for us. And John is saying, look, I, I, I understand. I got history with him. I've seen different things that he's done. I've watched him do certain things that just changed the 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 nature of things i paid attention to how people looked overlooked were overlooked and he paid attention to them i've i've seen him heal people who had years of things going on in their lives and i've seen what kind of love he displayed i've seen the kindness he showed to people who made some bad decisions who got caught up and i've seen the way he treated them like i've got history i got history in the, the way he he came to me 
and help me, but I also got history from the way I've seen him show up in others' lives as well. I've seen him. I've watched him confront people who were abused by the powers of a, who had the power and authority to hurt people. And I've seen him confront those people and not be afraid. I've seen him be bold and take up for the people who were downcast and trodden. I've seen that from him. I got history. That's what John said. Nah, I got history. I got history. So, so how Jesus loved showed us what love can really do. John said, I got some history. I've seen what his love does and what his love does for other people. And I've seen it with my own eyes. So, to be honest about your ideas is very important for you in order to move to this other spot or get to this other place. You got to be honest about your ideas of what God is like. You have an opinion about what God is like. And it's impossible for the opinion to not affect you. But I want to encourage you to be honest with yourself first. Be honest with yourself first. Maybe take a few minutes this week, sometime this week, and just write down what you really think about God. Don't give a churchy answer or the answer you feel obligated to write. Just be real. Don't worry, God can handle it. You're not doing, going to offend him. Just be honest with your thoughts and your ideas about God. And number two, process what God's love means for you personally. What does God love? What does his love mean to you personally? Because see, here's the deal. How Jesus' love shows us what love can do is his love love looks like Jesus and his love shows us what God's love can do John firsthand he experienced Jesus' love and it completely turned his life upside down see when you experience real love from God you will do whatever you got to do to make sure that everyone else knows his love. I'm challenging you. I want to challenge you this week. I want you to tell five, ten people about the about how God loves them. That's all, that's all I want you to say. That God loves you. He loves you. That's all I want you to say. And God loves you. He, his thoughts, his, his mind is on you. I want to challenge you to do that. The resurrection, what we call Easter, showed us just how much love can do. Love is the reason Jesus lived. Love is the reason Jesus died. And love is It's the reason Jesus rose again. It was all because of his love for you. God bless you. And I'll see you next week. What a wonderful experience we had today. We are so grateful to be a part of a church that is dedicated in teaching young people the word of God and how to apply it in our everyday lives. If you made the decision to give your life to Christ or rededicate, take Faith Chapel to 94000 and press respond. Now remember, we have virtual Bible study every first, second, and third Wednesday of the month. And now for more information, go to faithchapel.net slash students and follow us on Instagram at Faith Chapel Students. Hey guys, look, that's all we got for today's experience. For everybody on YouTube, 
We'll see you next week. And anybody that's watching on Zoom, it's time for small groups. Let's go.